we're going to find out how Evan Peters feels about playing Dharma. There's an interview out there. Um, wasn't going to watch this until... I only want to watch this until I watch the show. I know a lot of people have probably seen this before. Um, I'd imagine that... He that he, I, I'd imagine that he's going to say a lot of things about... I don't know. Probably treating the victims. Probably paying more grace to the victims and stuff like that. And the fact that he... I want to I wanna know what he'd done himself. That's what I want to know. They've dropped a few little shorts for different people. But this is the main character. I want to know what place he went to, man. Because I'm convinced. I said in my review just that he must have went to a dark place. Um, and I want, want... Again, the director. I can't remember what his name is. But well done for not glorifying... Jeffrey and really telling it from the victim side. So let's get it. Oh, fuck. That whale noise. Well, I sort of started with a blank slate with Dahmer. Just, I only had the image of the hazmat suits and the blue vat coming out of the, the building, which I didn't even know was an apartment complex. I found out later that it was the Oxford apartments where he committed most of his acts. Ryan sent me the scripts and then called and said, you know, Dahmer is interesting in that he is uh, almost regretful and has guilt and sort of confusion about what went on. He's uh, and doesn't really have a charming, mischievous smile. He's a docile, sort of aloof and almost disassociated from what he did. I immediately went to YouTube and watched. The, he told me also to watch the Stone Phillips interview, and, and so I watched that. That interview is a killer. And, uh, and then proceeded to read. Uh, biographies and uh, I was able to read the police report and his confession. I found on YouTube some audio of what sounds like a psychologist interviewing him or even a detective where he's sort of relaying sort of what he went through and the way that he's speaking is very candid and very normal. You know, again, it was so jaw-dropping. Sounds about really right. Happened, very candid at all times. it felt important to be respectful to the victims, to the victims' families, to try to tell the story as authentically as we could. And, uh, you know, you need to have certain plot points because he did do these things, but you don't need to embellish them. You know, we get Yeah, it. You that's know, we exactly what I said. Over and over didn't again. need to see it at all. And honestly, I was very scared about all of the things that he did and diving into that and trying to commit to that was a, a absolutely going to be one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my life because I wanted it to be very authentic but in order to do that I was going to have to go to really dark places and stay there for an extended period of time I have to say that the crew uh, was instrumental in keeping me on the guardrails I, I, I cannot thank them enough and I could not have done any of this role without them specifically Sarah our focus polar who was just such a breath such of fresh a great air and light you know when we were filming some of these horrific scenes jason our dp who sort of kept reminding me of sort of why we were doing it it was easy you know showing up there every day telling the story of jeffrey dahmer to get lost in that it was ah, a challenge bro to i swear to god that shit's the creepy shit to me all the, the weird so touching and lying down with uh, dead bodies and them but fuck man it had this entire world that he was keeping secret from everybody so you know we had one rule going into this uh from from Ryan that uh, it would never be told from Dahmer's point of view. Oh, that's okay, that's what I said in the review. Really so that's a good sympathizing with him. You're not really getting into his plight. You're more sort of watching it. Yeah, you know, very rare outside. to see that. It, it's called the Jeffrey Dahmer story, but it's not just him and his backstory. It's the repercussions. It's the society. It's this how society. Kind of like Michael Myers, to be fair, isn't it? We don't we don't see from Michael Myers' point of view. We always see from the victims and the. I know it's Michael Myers is not not real, but. It's just a, um, a tragic story uh, that affected everybody gets their side of the story told. And it's really, um, yeah. the Jeffrey Dahmer story is, is so much bigger than, than just him. Well, there you have it, man. There you have it. Great interview. Short. When I, he said a lot of what I said in my review to be fair. I mean, I'm not saying we think alike and that. I'm just saying that. That's kind of what I thought. It felt like that there wasn't trying to tell it from Jeffrey's side, um, side of the story. Um, to be fair, we don't need anyone to tell it anyway because Jeffrey Dahmer, that, that's the weirdest thing about him, isn't it? Is the fact that what Evan Peters just said about him being so candid. He spoke about everything because it was normal. And I picked up on parts of that in the show as well, what they 
it's very smart what they did. They did a lot of research. And the way that when you hear Jeffrey Dahmer, the real guy, speak about things he done, he doesn't sound like like a regular when a regular person recalls the tragic thing that they did, they sound a bit worried and anxious about talking about it. And there's a part in the show, and I think it's might be episode one. When he goes into the fridge to get the can and there's just a head in there, but like they don't treat it as anything, even the cam the camera work, the audio, it doesn't like zoom in on the head so the, the the audience can notice it. They literally just do it. So if you notice it, you notice it. And if you don't, you don't. And I remember me, my son and my missus in the living room was just like, yo, you see that, see that head? And the show just carried on. There was no like, and I think that that's the way they've done it. And, and they've really shown a lot of how he got away with stuff. Um, I think the biggest thing they, they, done on this show and it's because it probably still affects regular life now I'm not one of these snowflake people but th there's parts where like with witnesses they couldn't no one could have ever stopped Jeffrey Dahmer from murdering anybody like from 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 being a murderer but you could have stopped him that 17 could have been shortened down to like three or four for sure if they had just arrested him because in today's sight he ain't getting away with the the weird like um Messing with kid stuff, that's start happening. But at the same time, and and the world has got better. You know, what I mean, let's not pretend with the the um. I think that the the emergency services in terms of the police are better than they were back in the day. Um, they do the best job they can in it. The people. But there is where with Jeff, especially when you account like it's like night seventies up until like ninety one ish realistically the fact that there's there's racism in a way from the police not like i don't know how to say it doesn't feel like this direct thing it's almost like that stereotypical not paying attention to what this woman's saying and these these women are saying because they're just black women just talking um and the fact that what neighborhood neighborhood they're in even the victim who got away the police didn't seem like they wanted to speak to him very much they literally wanted to arrest him for being crazy um and then the and then being homophobic, which is highlighted a lot in the fact that the one victim who you could have saved who was a fourteen year old kid, um, you kind of saw that it was the guy was saying we're, we're partners and stuff, and you didn't really want to investigate it, and you kind of when you even when you got into the property, you really didn't want to touch anything and stuff because you know what I mean HIV and all that AIDS rife back then like people were thinking about if you touch a man you're gonna catch it. Obviously, I was a little I was like one. But, but at the same time, I know these things in it. So, done a great story. Like, telling the story was great. And I seen from Nisi, who played uh, Glenda Cleveland, just watch her interview as well. And she said that, like, everybody can be a Glenda Cleveland in some sort of way. And I agree with her. Anybody can be the person who's trying to alert someone about what's going on. And for whatever reason, the person doesn't want to listen to you. And you would hope that the reason why someone doesn't want to listen to you is just because they don't want to listen to you and it's just their problem. Not the fact that it's the colour of your skin or your sexuality or your gender or anything like that. Um, and we see this in modern society with like social services, with kids. People will complain about kids, nursery teachers and all these things. This person not feeding their kid, this kid's got bruises. They ignore it and then the kid dies. So Great interview, great story, great programme. He deserves an award for... He's acting. I understand if he doesn't get it because I'm pretty sure now that this program's out, the family doesn't really ain't interested in it. They probably don't want to see anything to do with it. They probably wanted to get on with their life a long time ago. It feels like every like certain amount of years, some more Dharma stuff comes up. And the problem is with, with the new age, with social media, once the program comes out, everyone makes a video like I am on YouTube. So, you know, I'm part of the problem, I guess. Um, and then all the old interviews and that start cycling back in the algorithm. Um, and then you get the psychopaths who want to talk about Jeffrey Dahmer as a nice person and all that. So I can imagine that they just want it to go away. But he does, based on acting alone, on the art, he deserves an award. I would give the, um, the, the niece who played Glenda Cleveland, I'd give her an award for a supporting actress. I think she was dope. Um, and the show. The show probably should get it as well. You know what I mean? Because if you do, I'm sure they'll dedicate it to the victims. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I know people always do this thing where they're like, oh, you have to get stuff signed off to make these stuff. From looking at it, I think the the the, the iconic court case where the, the lady's screaming at Dharma, I'm pretty sure that she's put out a statement already saying that 
she wasn't contacted. So I really hope that's not true. Or or I hope that she's just saying that she didn't receive the contact, but somebody tried to get in touch with her. Um, because it's, if one person says no, then really it shouldn't get made. And that's kind of how stuff goes. But let's be honest, the world doesn't work like that. People make slavery movies over and over again. They don't get in contact with all the families. People make um, these like war camp movies over and over again. World War Two movies, flipping Jewish concentration camps. It's kind of how the world works, isn't it? So, see from both sides. Obviously, seeing from the victim side more. Um, but yeah, hopefully, even if it gets to the point where they can make money off it themselves to help their families, not off like telling that story, but speaking about. Their, their family members who have gone now, you know what I mean? Shed some light on it, talk about how great they were. You never know, there's always ways around it. Anyway, I've been your boy. Comment, like, subscribe, and share.